Okay, now I'm getting ready to start my apple pie and the day's actually getting away from me. I've been multitasking and getting everything done. It's just that the pie's happening a little bit later than I thought. So you might see all of a sudden a new outfit because I'll probably have to do it tomorrow, finish it up. But I just wanted to go over what I'm gonna be putting into it. Let me just get my screen going in here. So what you see here is doubled, but the amounts that I'm telling you are um, going to be for a single pie. So all I need to do first is my dry ingredients. So it would be three cups of light brown sugar. Then we have, let's see, a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. Once again, like the pecan pie, very little ingredients. And then we have, let's see here, three quarters teaspoon cinnamon. And then nutmeg to taste. And you just mix this all up together. This is what's gonna be used to coat the apples. I love mixing this bowl. This is one of my grandmother's bowls. I have another over here that I've got a little note to not use because it's all cracked and broken inside, but um, so it's a nice little reminder. Every time I bake with it, it, it just reminds me of her. She actually cooked and baked on a wood-burning stove. Oh, there's some very large pieces of brown sugar in here. She cooked and baked on a wood-burning stove up in Nova Scotia. So when she would get up in the morning, I remember going there as a child, she would start it up with paper and wood. Um, that's how they heated the kitchen too. So very impressive. You know, here I am with my new oven and stove and my grandmother used to bake in a uh, wood burning stove. Times have changed. All right, so I've got to break up a lot of lumps here from my brown sugar. I tried using a, a pack that was open, but that's okay. Well, I'm just gonna use a, press it down and crush it, and then I'm going to cut all my apples. Don't need to watch me do that. I have to do seven apples, and I'm going to toss it in lemon juice to keep them from browning and then we will put it in the crust, put the top crust on, and then I'm gonna cut out the leaf pastry, if I have time. Once again, the family's gonna eat it so fast, I'm not even sure if they'll uh, notice the leaves, but I'm going to pop a uh, photo in right now of um, what I'm talking about with the leaves, just to maybe save my sanity here of trying to fit that in. The suction cup is not working very well on this apple peeler, but it is so much faster than peeling by hand. My daughter gave me this. So you're gonna see me probably struggle with this. I am going into my big basket here of fruits and I have a mixture here of macoon, apple, um, Macintosh apples and Cortland's. And I like to mix up this some of the little sweeter and sour when I make my pies. So here I go, I'm just gonna put this on here. And I got a little release I have to move so I can start getting to the blade. All right, here we go. So like I said, this is so much faster than hand peeling. It's gonna core it for me, it's peeling it for me, and it's slicing it for me. So I'm just gonna get rid of these, pull it right off there. It's probably a better way to take off the core, but I'm just doing that, throwing it in my compost bowl and getting up a little bit of peel here. Eat some. Right, and I'm just gonna slice this and put it in the lemon juice. So I have a couple more to do. Oops, all right, I'm gonna eat that one. Yum. Four more apples, three more apples, and then I'll do the second step for the second pie. All right, so I'm just gonna do the one pie recipe right now just to uh, show you. So what I did was I divided my dry mixture, so this will be for the other pie. I already sliced these apples and I mixed them with the lemon juice, and I'm just gonna pour it into the dry mixture. Let's set this aside. And let's see here. I should have had a spoon close by. Let me grab one out of here. 
Sorry, out of you. And all you're going to do is turn the mixture over to coat your apples. And I was looking for some of my other pie plates and I realized that when we moved, I got rid of a lot of them because I was going to get some others that I, you know, thought were a little bit larger size. I had some really old ones. Um, so I will be using what I usually use for quiche. That's all right. Won't change the taste at all, that's for sure. So I'm just coating these up very well. Smells so good. It's such a tease baking when you've been on a, I don't want to say restricted diet because we've been eating plenty of healthy foods. It's just that I have lessened my sweets, I've lessened my my carbs. Let's see. <clears throat> I'm gonna let myself enjoy on Thanksgiving. See this from there I've got the camera propped up but this is very well coated I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna grab what I usually use for my quiche like I said but it will work I hope the only reason I say I hope is that as I mentioned with the earlier video on the, um, the pecan pies these are kind of small for the roll-ups, so if you don't want to be, you want them to be generous because you're going to put this in and actually press it into the crease. There's some, I'm sure some of you are like avid bakers and you're cringing at how I'm doing things, but you know what? This has worked for me at, uh, for years. And I know everybody has their own way. It's like some probably would have sifted their sugar and their flour together. Not me. I, I, I bake to enjoy. Um, once again, if I was doing it for maybe a bake sale or something like that, I'd probably put a little bit more, more effort. That's, that's not fair, but that's what I like, you know, I like to do. Just, I have fun in the kitchen, so I take things casually. All right, so I have that up as much as I can. I'm gonna, this will be pinched with the other pie crust afterwards. That did take up quite a bit. So let me just turn a bit to the side here. Putting all of my mixture in there. Now this recipe calls for seven apples. I stopped at five because when I'm doing the leaf, I kind of like it to be more of a flat top versus domed. Everybody's different. I'm just put this out of the way again. All right, so I'm just going to move this about. Probably could have got away with six. Maybe the next pie will do six. All right, so for some, this might be a, a weird next step, but man, it makes such a yummy difference. I like to put uh, little slices of butter all along the top here. It just gives it uh, a nice little extra flavor and helps the juices. So just, once again, don't mind my fingers. All right, so I have butter all around the edge, if you can see that. Move this aside, and now I'm going to get the other roll. I'm just gonna lay this on top. And I'm gonna pinch it 
with the others. I'm going to roll it under, kind of like the pecan pie, and I'm pinching my edges just to seal it with the, the lower half. I have to poke some holes in the top for the steam. Now it's ready to put on the leaves. to get out my leaf cookie cutter. I bought these when I was in Vermont. Um, this is the maple leaf that I like to use. And I have another leaf here. It kind of looks like an oak leaf, but it's a little bit more pointed. I think I have another, but um, I haven't used it yet. Maybe it's just those two. But I love putting my cookie cutters in this big jar, keeping it on the counter when I need it. Let's put this back. So I use um, chilled dough, it's a lot easier to cut, and I just put a piece of parchment paper on my cutting block here. Um, let's see, you can use, of course, your, you know, a nice cold counter, you might want to flour it, but I'm just going to use this like this. I have some melted butter. And let's see if I can, hopefully this is in your frame. Since I, you can see it's getting darker. My water glass should be filled with wine, but it's not. Um, I'm just going to brush a little bit of butter around the edge here. Not only is this gonna help brown the pie nicely, golden brown, it will help the leaves attach better too. All right, so just a little bit. So I'm just gonna go around and I keep spinning my cutter. Let's see, and then I'll just put a little bit here on the edges. Let's see, what kind of pattern am I gonna make today? Um, I think I'll have them go inward. I keep trying to turn my cutter so that I can get as much of this dough usable as possible. So I'm kind of using the butter as if it's glue. What are your favorite pies for the holidays? I think ours definitely are the pecan, the apple, which is why I make them. I did pick up a custard pie when I was out yesterday. Um, love blueberry pie, but I just don't usually do blueberry for, for Thanksgiving. don't know why. Pumpkin pie. Um, I just didn't make one this year. And I don't know if it's one of the favorites here in the family, but I love pumpkin pie with whipped cream. So you can put these on any pattern you want, of course. I'm just going to, I'm just doing it around the edge to show you. And if you have different size leaves, that would be pretty too. I'd love to find another maple leaf that has a bit smaller. So I could do different size leaves just like a tree does. I may just do enough to use one path and use the second roll of dough or pie crust for the other pie. I forgot stuff for my mashed potatoes, so I still have to go to the grocery store tomorrow, day before Thanksgiving. I don't know when I'm gonna get this uploaded, hopefully before Thanksgiving, but I'm hosting, gosh, um, I think, I think we're now at 14 for dinner maybe, and then my daughter and her boyfriend are showing up a little bit later in the, in the evening. Then some of the kids, AKA adults, <laughs> are sleeping over and we're going to do a breakfast in the morning. I'm making a French toast casserole and we'll have sausage and scrambled eggs and I'll be making Bloody Marys and mimosas and coffee. Probably lots of coffee. Let's see if I can get in there. They're 
don't think I have enough to finish it off the way I want to without going into that second roll, but let's see. So if you can see that here, I don't know if you can see that. And then once again, I'm going to brush along the top of the leaves with the butter and I forgot to get it out. I have a vanilla flavored sugar I like to use on this. They do sell uh, vanilla flavored sugar at our, our local grocery store. I'm not sure if they do at all other stores or not. You can certainly find it online. I will try to find a link for it down below. I know there's several brands that have it and if I can find it, I will link it for you. Just doing the little tips of these right around the edge. Don't want them sticking out or else they will burn too. All right, I think I'll stop there. And then I'm just gonna press the edge. I do usually anyway, so I'm just gonna use a little butter so that I'm just gonna go around and press it. I think I mentioned earlier that when this goes in the oven, I will have another cookie sheet with tin foil below it, or at least tin foil below it, because the apple pies usually do bubble over and I've just got to keep the oven as, I don't have to, but I like to keep the oven as clean as possible. Just prevents a, another step of having to clean it or smoking. It might not smoke, or it would smoke if uh, it was bubbling over and hit an element. There. I kind of like that. There we go. And I see a little dry spot. So I'm going to just walk away for a second and I'm going to go get my sugar. A little bit of sugar up here. So this is a vanilla sugar I like to use and it's in larger crystals. So it comes out very pretty. And actually, there's a vanilla stick in here that is ready to come out. Just sprinkle that all around. This is funny, the first time I've noticed the vanilla stick. So I've definitely been using this. And it's finally at the point where it showed. I didn't know it was in there. Still getting used to the sounds of the, the kitchen, the refrigerators make noises, bubbling. Okay, I think that's it. So I'm going to pop this in the oven. I will put all the directions below or a link to the website also that has this. But I'm ready to bake this. And I'm gonna get another pie started, but I think I'll just keep them rolling and bake them at separate times. I'm just looking at this. I shouldn't have put my phone there. I'm gonna just put a couple more, right? Because I covered most of my, my steam holes. And I, like I mentioned, I have this on a cookie tray with tin foil. It just really helps with cleanup and um, any smoke that might happen if it got into the, the base of the hot oven. I'm just going to put the holes in for steam. What? <laughs> what? I'll have to edit that out. <laughs> what, what? 